Hello. Hello, Debbie. How are you, Matt? Good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, I went for a walk this morning. Hello. That's great. We're just letting everybody in. Here comes Angie. Here comes Becca. Here comes John. Hey, James. How are you? Good. Excellent. Get everybody showing here. Okay. So gonna... everybody can kind of keep your audio on now, and then when Loretta is going to join us, we're going to turn our audio off so we can give her the floor. Hi, Debbie. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. So great to see you. It's so nice over here where I am right now. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? You're just saying. Yeah. Wait. Wait up. They stay for a walk. Hey, right? Deb, yeah. hey. Nora, here hey, comes Kimberly. Hi, Debbie. Hello. 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 Yeah. Okay, there's a line to it. They can't yeah. see you. All right. Well, there. I'm Ask her if she can hear you. Okay. Hey, Ray. Can you see this? I see Debbie. Little... Debbie, uh, can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Coming in loud and clear. It's yeah. great to see you. We're yeah. so excited you're here with us, yeah. Loretta. Can you, you? I mean, we, we can't see Jen's picture though on the screen. Can you see Jen? If you're having any problems. Hey, Deb. Hey, hey, we can talk offline. We can uh, talk hey, about it. Hey. hey. There's some other people that. Hey, Jen. That we just aren't seen either. That's okay. As long as they're here, we know they're here. <laughs> I know. I I did. We did um, a Zoom chat yesterday with our Last church. night with our church, and we were able to see everybody. Oh, really? Okay. So you have it on your phone. I don't know why it's not working with this particular call. Okay. Let's see. Hi, Debbie. Let us here. We're just going to wait for everybody else to jump on the call. I know that um we had a call scheduled. To meet my colleagues had a right before this, so I'm sorry if some of you had to wait to get on there was a meeting going on right before this meeting we're all using zoom these days hey, so. <laughs> hey debbie ray had and hey ray how's it going hey, debbie, can debbie can you hear me yes, can you hear me yep hello deb hello how are you great how are you doing good excellent nice job this morning thank you okay. So I know, okay, we've got about 20 people on the call. Loretta is here with us. I just saw her. Hi, Loretta. Hello, how are you? Hey, Loretta. Good, how are you? Hey, Loretta. Hello. Hi, Loretta. How are you? Good. How do you like to stand minutes. in the house? Yeah. <laughs> It's about two minutes to one. So Loretta, if we uh, if we start like exactly one, I know a couple of people are still hopping on here. Sure, so sure, no that problem. Good. Okay. Start videos. One more meeting after this today. No, wait. Two more. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I never was Zoom. I, I was just on Zoom before this because my agency does oh. something with Zoom, so I'm. I just well, want to do that. Want. Great. I want to yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. I just can't get her picture. Yeah, John. That's OK. Well, There's a couple people, people without pictures. Other people That's OK. Can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do we'll it. No, I'm not on here. Say hi to Nora. Hi, Nora. Hi, Nora's on here. Don't worry, I'll get it. Yep. Okay. Hey, Nora. I'm working hey, on my video, so hello. I'm only saying that to you. Hello, Mason. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, how's great Mike Mason doing? Mike Mason's okay. doing well. He's busy working. That's all right. Don't worry about him. Don't worry about him right now. What about the setup? Hey, Nora. Hey, Nora. The devices anyway. Bye, bye. Hey Chris, it's just about one o'clock. We have over there. Thirty people on the call. Let's see who it is. It's Alicia. 
I have to call them back. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's just about I one o'clock, but I want to make sure we have enough time for um for Loretta's presentation and enough time for questions and answers. So I think we're going to get started. So what I'm going to do is ask everybody to press your mute mute button down in the corner. If you hit that microphone, it's going to put a slash mark. Yep. To it. Just press that for us so Loretta can have um can take the floor. How does that sound? Can everybody do that? Just hit that mute key down in the bottom or just try to be quiet and then we'll, we'll let you read it. Yeah, but I can't. I don't know where the mute key is. That's okay. If you just, just, you know, just don't, you know, try not to talk if, if Loretta's talking. Just want to make sure we can all hear her really clearly. Okay. All right, Loretta, take it away, my friend. Okay. How many of you are new speakers? Oh, I think they're all on mute. <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> Can you see a show of hands? Well, whether you're a new speaker or not, public speaking is supposed to be one of the toughest things for people to do. You always hear what's the toughest thing that somebody could do or the hardest thing. And first thing, the number one question is get up on a stage and speak in front of somebody. Well, obviously, you have done that. I know Mr. Haddon, he has spoken many times. Uh, so many of you have spoken. But the thing is with public speaking, if you can do public speaking, you don't have to worry about getting nervous in front of nothing else. I remember the first time I did public speaking and a lady came to me and she said to me, Mrs. McFarland, she's now deceased. She says, Loretta, I think you could speak. And I looked at her with cold face. Don't even think about it. I was thinking, I don't do that. Nobody wants to hear me. Nobody's got time for people like me. And I actually said, nobody has time for a dummy. And of course, a dummy is like a puppet. But as time went by, she says, Loretta, I think you can speak. I never had training. So you're very, very lucky to be able to get this training today and the training that you had. That's one thing that I like about Special Olympics is that they're teaching people to lead. And also, if somebody wants to speak, you can get the proper training, starting out with the beginner global messenger. So today we're going to talk about tips on public speaking. I don't know if all of you have the, the paper. It sort of looks like, like this. So if you have that, the first page is a paid with a gentleman speaking and he's speaking to somebody and there's a lot of people behind him and evidently he's speaking on behalf of that group so like I said nobody wanted to hear a person like me speak and I was wrong I was very wrong that woman Janet McFarland was right because now people are speaking all over we all have a voice and we want you to be your very best when you speak in public. And speaking in public, like I said, a lot of people can't do that. But you have a voice too. And people want to hear you. You may think when you're standing on that stage and you're speaking that nobody wants to hear you. That's not true. Because when you're talking about Special Olympics, Special Olympics is rated as one of the best brands for people with intellectual disability and one of the best brands in athletic and sport competition. People do love Special Olympics, but there's a lot of people who don't know about what we do. They only think we provide a track meet, but they don't know that we provide leaders like you who will be able to speak on behalf of our movement. So before you give your speech, I wanna give you some tips on public speaking. And these are just little tips that you can write down or you could get from this, or Deb could send you these little notes. Yep, and I'm going to give you these tips. So Deb, do you want me to start, go on? Go for it. Yep, you're doing great. Okay. Is every, can everyone hear? Because I can't see them. If you had your hearing aids on, you could hear. hear you Okay, we can all hear? Yes. Before your speech, 
These are the tips I like to give you on public speaking. Before your speech, ask who your audience is. And when we say about asking who our audience is, you might go somewhere and you might think you're speaking to, uh, say it's a school and you get to the school and you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna to speak to the little elementary kids in first through third grade. And you get to that school and it's not the little elementary kids, it's the high school. So it's always important to ask who your audience is. You might go somewhere and they say, oh, we like somebody to represent Special Olympics and come to speak to our um, Kiwanis meeting. And you'll say, Kiwanis meeting? What is that? So that way you can talk to the people and say, what is the Kiwanis meeting? And when you go to that event, ask how much time do I have to speak? That is very important because sometimes when you go to things, they say you have five minutes to speak and that's all. So you, you have a big long speech written or you have a speech in your head like I do. And I figure, oh, I'm gonna speak 20 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna speak about this, this, this. And I'm up there speaking and the gentleman comes up and says, oh, due to limited time, Miss Claiborne will not be able to finish her I speech. It so it's very important to ask how much time do you have before you to speak. The next bullet point is be sure to know what your topic or theme is so you can prepare for your speech. And I've had that happen to me. I'd go somewhere and they say, oh, Loretta, you're going to speak to the Kiwanis about Special Olympics York County. And then I get there and I start speaking about Special Olympics York County. Then somebody asked them, well, isn't the topic about the Kiwanis and how they uh, work with Special Olympics all over the world or something like that? That's why it's always be sure to know what your topic is. And so that way you can speak on that topic. And just ask them, I know you're the Kiwanis. What do you want me to speak on? What is your thing? So their thing might be raising money for city projects, including Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. So you can tell about your impression of Special Olympics, your story of Special Olympics, and what their money is going to benefit in that project that they're doing. So that way you can prepare ahead of time on what you're speaking about. I've been there, I've done that, and there's nothing worse to get somewhere and say, oh, well, that's not what they told me. So I always like to say, what is my topic? What are you looking for? What is my thing? During your speech, make sure that you're speaking clearly because you want, don't want to get up and say, well, the, the corners is blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, uh. You want to speak nice and clearly. Well, the Qantas is a great organization of people who help our community and also they help our Special Olympics. It's all right to take a nice deep breath in between. It's really good so everyone can hear because the person you might think that they can hear, can't hear nice, clearly, so that everyone, if you speak clearly enough, even somebody's way in the back, they can kind of read your lips. Make eye contact. The next bullet point is make eye contact with your members of your audience. If I'm talking to you and I turn around and I say, well, Special Olympics athletes are on the Zoom meeting today, all you're seeing is my ear. They want to see your face. They want to see your reaction. It's called body language. So it's very, very important to make sure that they could see your face and not see the side of your head or focusing on something else. You want to keep the eye contact you want to keep them engaged. Next bullet point is stay on topic. For example, if you're talking about Special Olympics fundraiser, you don't want to start talking about your favorite hobby. Like for instance, if you're talking about Special Olympics fundraiser, I'm here to talk about the Special Olympics fundraiser that we have the torch run, which is run by the, the police in our community and police do it all over the country. Then all of a sudden I say, 
Well, I'm here to talk about the torch run because I run in the torch run and we run and we do this and we do that. And then you start talking about something else. So you want to stay on topic with your speech. If it's the fundraiser, kind of stick to the fundraiser. Tell your story is the next bullet point. You don't need somebody else's story. Everyone has a story. Everyone. I remember I was at an event. And it was at a local college in Connecticut. And somebody says, this guy comes in and he starts talking. He says, do you have a story? And it was college students, people going for college. And this one gentleman says, I don't have a story. And the gentleman looked at him. So he asked him, do you have a dog? No, I got bit by a dog one time. Well, tell me about when you got bit by a dog. Tell your story. So if you're in Special Olympics, well, I started running with my brother, Hank, and I decided I wanted to keep running. My brother moved away. He went in the service. Then all of a sudden, I was running by myself, and somebody saw me running and said, hey, Loretta, I think I have something you will like. Then I go right into the spill. I started running, and I thought it was boring because I'm running by myself. And then this gentleman asked me, this counselor asked me, I think I have something you will like because you like to run, Special Olympics. Then you could tell that story. Don't tell somebody else's story. Tell your story, whether it's something at your home, whether it's how you got into Special Olympics, whether what you did in school. It might be something you've done. You're going to college. You may have graduated from school. A lot of people think that Special Olympic athletes don't go to college. So that's unique to tell your own story. And during your speech, during your speech, if you use a quote, this is the next bullet point, or words that someone else has said, then always give credit to that person who said it. For example, if you know the person, give them that credit. Always tell a story that Martin Luther King, always, always use this quote that Martin Luther King used. And when I'm speaking, I say, I like to tell you about something I always go by. I try my best to go by this quote by Martin Luther King. Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. Or if I don't know Martin Luther King, or known he said that, but I've heard that he has said that, someone once had said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. So if you don't know the person, or if you know a quote by somebody, always said, it was once said, or someone once said. So those are the quotes that I have. And the last quote that I have is remember to be your best. Remember to be your best. And if you want to use a little humor and make somebody laugh or say something funny, that's okay, but you don't want too much humor because you don't know if it's a joke or something like that. I would vary away from jokes because sometimes jokes hurt other people. And sometimes people don't even like jokes about their animals. So that's what my topics are. And does anyone have any questions? That's what my questions are, and those are my tips. And after your speech, always, always thank your audience. I do. Send a little thank you note to them, and thank them for inviting you to speak. So does anyone have any questions? I do. Yes. How long should the speech be? Does it, does it depend on what, where you are? Like, is it like a timed, like, should... Well, in the beginning, at the first, one of the first tips was to always when you go to somewhere, you go to a school, ask them, how long do I have to speak? Okay. Okay. And you as the person who's going to present yeah. that, those marks, that's what you want to know. Just what? nicely say, excuse me, how long do I have to speak? Okay. And they would tell you. Thank you. That's a good question. I got a question. Yes. 
Um, when you used to speak, did you always used to try to feel like you ramble too much or feel like it's too much? Can you repeat your question? I asked, when you used to speak, did you used to ramble a lot, make, your, make no sense in all what you used to say? I'm very, very cognizant of what I say, or conscious, I should say, of what I say. You don't want to get up and you don't want to ramble. If you have to write your speech, that is great. Then that way, if you feel as though you're going to get up in front of the stage and you don't have a paper in your hand and you can't see your speech, you know what? It's okay to write your speech. Guess what? The president of the United States, he reads from a prompter. He has his speech written in front of him. Even though you think he doesn't, he has his speech written. So it's okay to get up and read your speech. And that way, you won't <laughs> ramble. Okay. I have a question, though. I'm sorry. I have a question, though. When you said about Dr. Martin Luther King about he had a dream of being being with people who who have, who could be have their rights of being with be with interracial people. He had he had a right to say like he believed of freedom. When he said free at last, free at last, thank God I am free at last. Now, what he meant was he meant that if he if people have freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of right. Freedom of choice. You have a freedom of right and freedom of speech and freedom of choice. You have the right to speak, and no one else can't tell you that. Exactly, exactly. But what I was saying, I was just using one of his quotes. If I get up on the stage and I say I follow this when I'm out every day, if I'm doing a sport, or if I'm on a job, or if I'm doing something, faith. Because sometimes you'll get out there and you say, oh, I can't do this. I got to have some faith. I have to have some faith that I could do this. I've never done this before. Then I think about his quote, faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. Just giving him that credit because he had said that. Or if I use a quote like, gee, some who has so much has so very little. That's my quote. But if I say it on some, something like my mom would say, my mom once said, you know what? It's not how much you have, it's what you have and how you use it. I would say my mother once said that. I give her that credit. So if I don't know somebody, I would say it was once said. Given Good that question. it wasn't something that I said, that it was once said by something, but I used their quote. I have a question. Um, like if you... If you come up to like a um, a campus like Loomis Chafee, if you come up to Loomis Chafee School and they ask you to speak for Special Olympics and they tell you that you have five, 15 minutes and you need to come up with like a, um, a thing to say, could you like type it out before you go to the sure. Shafi or sure. you could can type you, it out and or, you would sit home at home and practice and see how much time it takes. And then when you go to the Ashley place, you can ask them how many minutes do you want me to do my speech and where could you want me to do it? And if it's like a large people, my hands get um, um, sweaty. And so I get, sometimes I get nervous of speaking, but I don't get a lot, but I just want to say thank you for giving uh, me some heads up on tips on how to um, do speaking in front of people. <laughs> Well, if your hands get sweaty before you speak, a couple minutes, just take a couple deep breaths. And you don't have to make a lot of noise with your breath. Just check out your hands. While you're there by, you know, by yourself, you don't have to do it on the stage or anything. You want to do that before, you, before the people even see you. And that kind of gets your jitters away from you. Thank you. You're welcome. 
for me, it's like sometimes if you don't want to like rush when you're talking, sometimes you gotta be careful and uh, try to not to jam the words together because you don't want to make sense. Yes, you yes. want to take your time and sit at home. If you have a mirror, everybody has a mirror in the restroom. Mm -hmm. After you take your shower, just stand in front of your mirror and say, hello, my name is Loretta Claiborne. Take a breath. And I'm here to speak to you about, take a breath, the law enforcement torch run. The law enforcement torch run, I took a little breath between each word. Oh, yeah. I did the torch run when I was 16 years old. Wow. That was young. Yeah. That's great. Man. For me, man, it made me tired out. Ever again. I even did the torch run too. I was on the uh, Special Olympics national track team, and that was lots of fun. Okay. Okay. It's yeah. Loretta, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I remember when I was somewhere and you told the story of how people weren't nice to you in school and you ran home and that's how you got into running. I got into running with my brothers. My teacher yeah. knew that if I would leave school the same time as the other kids, there was this one kid, Brian, he would start it and he would start like, picking at me and stuff. So she would let me out of school a couple minutes early and look at me and says, okay, Loretta, you got your five, your two minutes. Let's get moving. Right. I'd like to use that story someday. <laughs> you can. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Chris Vitarski from Green Meridown. I did speak at Southern Connecticut State University during the summer games. Wow. Awesome. Summer games, I was introducing someone from Southern. Well, hopefully we'll have summer games next year because no one's having them this year. Yeah. I heard that we're doing virtual summer games. Yep, we're doing a little virtual summer games, Loretta. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. they're, they're having yeah. a, I think it's a World Summer Games or something like that, Nationals. Each program is doing their summer games. Yeah. Like, so that'll be cool. Maybe you'll get to speak at that. Yeah. Like, I'd be happy if I can tell uh, from the original special Olympics and special Olympics Connecticut to uh, hold a flag and say a few words about special Olympics. Cool. I've been on the media a couple of times because I got interviewed by Class 61 and I was having my basketball practice in Glastonbury and the new stadium, the news reporters team there and uh, was able to see me, me, com see me compete with my Glastonbury friends and afterwards doing the uh, interview is like, wow, this is awesome. I'm glad they picked me. That really lucky. <laughs> and best part is seeing it on TV afterwards. Awesome. <laughs> That's not how they put it. <laughs> so. I did remember going on TV a couple of times for summer games and for the penguin plans. Mm -hmm. Penguin plans because I did it with the president. President. Oh, Special Olympics, which is Paul Dooley. Well, I think we're running out of time. She said we had 20 minutes. So if Deb allows, we could probably still talk. Yeah, I think we've got a few more minutes. If anybody has any additional questions oh, okay. for Loretta or yeah. um, anything they'd like to share. Let, Loretta, if you have a little more time, I think we have a little more time. I have okay? time. <laughs> <laughs> anybody hey. else want to ask a question or have I a do. comment? Uh, Brian, go ahead. 
Go ahead, Riley. Okay, my question yeah. is to Loretta. 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 My question is, do you know if there are Special Olympics in all of the states of the United States? And do most of them have been a grow messenger training? There are Special Olympics uh, programs in all 50 states, and we are called the North American region, so that includes the Caribbean, and the Canadian provinces. So yes, there are Special Olympics all over and every state has a global messenger program. Some mm -hmm. states don't have a leadership program, but mostly every state and province has a Special Olympics program. And they also have a global messenger program to get their athletes out to speak. Because you know what? The best salespeople for Special Olympics are you. The athlete. I and I'm an athlete like you. So what my job is, it's a tough job. But to me, it's not a tough job. And then either speaking about Special Olympics. Yeah, it's like we come together. The no matter what athlete or global messenger, what we are, we always stand up. No matter what color, what. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what color you are, what religion, but we do have a freedom of speech, freedom of right, freedom of fear, and freedom of religion. No matter what, I, I always fight for the people with disabilities and without. Well, you seem like you got it going already. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and they also represent Greater Meadow Town. Well said, Chris. Thank you, Brett. A good exercise is to practice by video, video taping yourself doing the speech. That's good practice, but everyone doesn't have video. Yeah. You know how I practice? I sit here in front of my TV and turn the TV off because my house is real tiny and I can just sit here and use my TV, the screen, and I make sure I don't use my hands too much. Sorry. And I sit here and just screen. practice my speech. And I use my TV, my TV is my audience. I'm acting like there's a lot of people there. I'll turn the TV on and turn on like a church where they show the people all the time and I act like I'm speaking to that church. I always look at the mirror too. Like I always go upstairs yep, like the mirror. the mirror and I talk to it. Earlier. Yep. Same as like, um, same as like, when I go on to my like Teams or actually uh, Zoom, I actually um, I actually talk on there too also because um today I'm a self advocate coordinator in the West West region and um I was doing my uh, my uh, state state white meeting today and um I did that really well because I was I was ready for it. Um I plus I, plus I have been um have been practicing also. I got a yeah. I got a question. Sorry. I'm About sorry. Ryan, and Ryan, go ahead. Okay. I have a question real quick though. Um, I put down here, I put someone put, put something down for me and said, ask, ask um, Global Messengers, are, are they going to be involved in the summer games this year or not? I don't know. That's a question for Deb. Yeah, well, uh, you know, actually, so if you want to participate in the virtual summer games, um, there's all the information on the website. So if you go to the homepage, you can click on the um, summer games box on the homepage. And then there's boxes down below on that page. And there's activities that you can participate at home. So there's some track and field activities. There's some tennis activities, a couple cycling activities. And there's one more that I'm forgetting. Um, swimming. swimming? Not swimming. No, there was um, a couple. There that's what I do. 
Track, soccer, soccer. Track. Yeah. So there's different <laughs> activities you can do in your backyard and then you can score yourself and take some pictures and some video of you doing the activity and share. This it. could be pretty cool. Isn't that yeah. pretty cool? Yeah. I'm going to put it all together and we're going to air all your videos and pictures awesome. on Saturday of Summer Games weekend. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So That'd if you all have any yeah. questions, just send me an email or give me a call. I can kind of walk you through the steps if you need a little assistance or ask your parents or mentors, okay? Okay, real mm -hmm. quick though. What is your what is your email so I can write it down and I can we can um I can send it to you and everything else? Hey, Gabby, I know I know your email address. I can share it with other people. Okay, do you want to tell Aaron what it is? Yeah. Aaron, um, this is Matt. Um, Debbie Horn's work email address is um, D D E B B I E H at S C T dot org. Okay, that, that's 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 her that's her website though. So when I can that's just... her. The website is www.socit.org. That's the website. And I gave you her email address. All right. Thank, Thank you, Matt. You. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. And I think Ryan had a question, right, Ryan? Yes. Go for it. I'm going to ask Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi. Hi. My question to you is, do we have some, uh, what is it? What is it, mom? I don't know. You're asking the question. Uh, she know about do you do know any other trainings in Connecticut? Oh, what do you mean training? You were asking Sports me. Sports training? Yeah, bush training. Sports trainings. Um, I don't know if there's anything going on right now, but if I find anything out, I'll let you know. There is the SOCT Fit 5 challenge going on on our on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Are any of you members of that? that group on Facebook? Yes. Excellent, uh -huh. excellent. So that's a great way to stay active and there's lots of different workouts being offered on there. Um, you can kind of share what you're doing and suggestions to help other people stay mm -hmm. fit and active mm -hmm. as well. So I, you know, I would highly recommend that if you're not a part of, if you're on Facebook and you're not a part of the SOCT Fit 5 group, definitely there's still time to join. There's a lot of fun stuff okay. going on. Oh, and, and Debbie, just mm -hmm. as you know, um, I, I do have this chart that will that will actually that is called called Fit Five, and it's based on like when you when you chart your like the, um how much you drink um 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 drink um um drink lots of water and also um eating fruits and vegetables. So it's like a chart, and then and then and then but 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 at the bottom. And then um, you have to mark your fit five. So it's like when you do your workout outside, like um, mark, mark how many miles. Do you mean miles. like this? Yes. Yeah. That's it. And we have, um, in addition to Loretta being one of our special guest speakers, we have Bo on the line here too. He's joining us and I think he wants to share something. Is that correct? Sure. Now, Bo, come on. Hey, Bo. Hey, I'll tell you what, this is this is making my Hey, Bo. How are you? Hey, Bo. Hey, Bo. Thank you. Hey, Bo. Hey, Bo. Hey, Bo. I hate this group. Um, but, it, but here's what I want to tell you. Uh, other than the fact that it is, it's pretty amazing to see all your faces because we're going nuts at headquarters not being able to be around you guys. Um, <laughs> And, and I love the discussion. I love look, what Loretta's doing. Um, love the fact that Norris, uh, I know in the game here, I probably got Loretta to do this. So um, always good to see her as, as well. But I, I do want to mention that um, there is, there really is no training going on um, for summer games between athletes. You know, so we're, we are in a scenario where the international office has taken a position that we really can't do training together, training together mm -hmm. all the way through June 30th. Uh, we can't do games. We can't do fundraising where people are together. Yeah. So the virtual summer games is one very safe way of doing this because, you know, 
we don't want any of you to get COVID-19. Uh, we don't want volunteers mm -hmm. to get it. Uh, so, so you need, you need to follow the rules and, you know, with Fit5, again, that's another safe way. There's nothing better than to watch a lot of you guys doing treadmills and yoga and walking. I've never seen athletes do more um, exercises, uh, you know, on multiple days during the week than I have on Fit5. I mean, most of us are used to, you go to practice once a week. And then you're really not walking. You're not doing the treadmills. You're not doing yoga. You're not doing all that stuff. But a lot of people are doing that. And because you're all leaders of our movement as athletes, what will be really important is mm -hmm. for all of you to be members of Fit5. You should all join. Mm -hmm. And we all need you to, to do the virtual summer games. You should all be doing that. And you should be telling your friends about the virtual summer games because your examples to other people and the most important thing we're all on the phone right now right mm -hmm. we've got 14,000 athletes who are not on the phone and they're socially isolated you know they're not doing a lot uh, and we really need your help uh, down the road here for you to get other athletes activated into doing Fit5. We need you guys to get athletes activated into doing the virtual summer games so we can get more people involved because in the end, it'll be a lot of fun. And, you know, because you know what it's like right now. You know, you've mm -hmm. been weeks, you're, you're holed up, you can't go anywhere. Um, but we can help a lot of other people get beyond that if you actually help us so i did want to say that debbie and thanks again miss loretta for your leadership really? not only here but all, all around the world really appreciate it well, thank you i thank do, you thank you thank you thank you Bo. do you have a question thank you thank you thank you actually debbie yeah i have a question for you okay have has special olympics made a decision about the fall games yet back not exactly there's still we're still planning we're we're talking about different scenarios so as soon as decisions have been made we'll definitely communicate that with you um we'll do it through social media we'll do it on the website um we'll do notices and letters out to your um local program coordinators um, so it is something that we are thinking about. The sports staff is working on, you know, how to make it work. So maybe we can do something with smaller groups of people, um, but nothing has been decided or finalized yet. So we will definitely keep you in the loop. And I appreciate your asking, Jen. I, okay. I've been working a lot too through this whole thing. Good. At the grocery <laughs> store. Staying safe, right? You're one of our essential yep. employees. So we thank you very much for doing what no, you're, you're doing. welcome. No, I, I have to go. And Debbie. Okay. For Debbie, yeah, um, Mr. Jermaine has been working. He's an essential employee. Somebody's got to lower those trucks, so he's been working and staying safe and um, um, keeping an eye on Special Olympics, which he's. <laughs> That's great to hear. Bye, staying safe. So awesome. I just wanna. I know that are there any more questions for Loretta? No. Um. No. no. I think we want to thank her. She did an amazing job. I'm going to send all yeah. those to all you afterwards, so you have those to refer to. Dan, okay. yes. I, thank you. Oh, cool. Thanks, Loretta. Thanks, Loretta. Thank you for we'll taking part. We'll be in touch regarding future uh, future trainings. We want to keep. Thanks, Loretta. Thank you, thank you did an awesome Debbie. job. Thank you. Thanks, thank you all for participating. Thank you, Loretta. Thank you, Bo. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Loretta. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Oh, Dan, what's your question? Yeah, there's another Zoom meeting going on too. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Let's yeah, yeah, miss yeah, you, you all. all. Ask your question. If that, if people need to leave, that's quite all right. I do have it. <laughs> Go for it, Dan. Go ahead. Colton oh, have all his stuff ready for you. Sorry, Dan. What was that? Zoe, be quiet. I'm on the Zoom. Bad cat. I was doing something in Maryland. There he is. See ya.
Okay, if you're going to stand, please mute your phones if you're, if you're not oh, going to hear it. Like, 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 you're the top. Top. Yeah. Yeah. No. I had to put it on the piano. I had to put it on the top. Dan? Of the piano. Hello? Hello? Oh. Hello? Put it on the floor. All right, Dan, do you have a question? Yes. Go for it. Hi, I'm Mr. Anchor Walker from Big Y. And they did mention it. And, and there was a glass shield with the customer. It's called a six feet distancing between you and, and other people. Six feet away from each other is the big Y is doing it right now. To keep everybody safe, that's and a good idea. They just safe. want everybody to keep their distance. And they can't go soccer now. It's yep. done. And right, but we can, you can do some soccer activity. All that. Thanks for sharing. And when she said that Dr. Martin Luther King speaks, he's a preacher and he spoke. Mm hmm. So I need to know how many minutes that he spoke. How many minutes he spoke? Yes. When was this? Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh, Martin Luther King. King. I don't know. Is Loretta still on the call? I don't know if she's still with us. Loretta. Loretta. Wednesday, 28. Okay, I don't you. have the answer. Well, we have a lot of minutes. Oh, a lot of minutes. That's a good Friday. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll have we'll have to look that up for you again. I'm not sure how many minutes. And Saturday, 29. Uh, and speech. Excellent. Like that you have five days. And Friday, 30. Yeah. Let me take my Never Some, somebody here. needs to mute. <laughs> 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 Excuse me, Deb, I got a question to ask you. Okay, what is it? Um, a two part question. Um, that is two hours and 20 minutes. Someone needs to mute their phone. Okay, that might be better. <laughs> okay, um, oh. my question is um, I work out with my trainer. Can I still work out with him while I do virtual training, or how does that work? Well, as Bo was saying, it's not really virtual training. You're just doing some activity Bye. in the backyard um, uh -huh. and sending in the results to Special Olympics along with photos and videos so we can share those on Summer Games weekend because right. we can't be together. So unfortunately, we can't um, do the sports yeah. and we can't do the trainings together, but you can do these activities. So if you're doing something with your trainer, that's great. If you're doing something virtual yeah. with them, okay. to kind of help prepare for doing those activities for virtual summer games, that's a really great thing. Yeah, and, and two, um, does a global messenger have to be like part of the virtual opening ceremonies or is that for other people to do? You know what, I think what they did this year, they just had somebody doing an oath and it was the athlete who was chosen to win the um, Hall of Fame award this year. Uh -huh. so something a little different. So I don't think that they're mm -hmm. gonna use the global messengers for that. And we're trying to keep it mm -hmm. short because you know yeah. everybody's online. It's hard to kind of keep people's attention. Is there gonna be a virtual torch with this too? <laughs> well, from I what I understand, so. I think some of the police departments are taping some, uh, some of them uh, themselves doing like driving through their, their towns and they're sending in some videos. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to put a lot of videos oh, okay. together from a lot of different contributors. So we have some sponsors that are going to send all the athletes some messages. We've got um, some different folks. I don't want to give all the secrets away. I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, Deb. See you soon.
<laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, thank you Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, okay, I'll be in touch and I'll send you Loretta's yeah, notes. You have them. I'll email them right after. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Debbie. Stay safe. Okay. Bye now. Bye. 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 Bye.